What's up, everybody? Jensen Cummings here. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. Today is Best Served Podcast 187, and we're talking recording chefs at home with Leanne Holmesy of Restaurant TV. Leanne, thanks for being on. It's my honor. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So our channel here, Best Served Loud, you are the second guest ever on this focus channel where we are really talking to storytellers, filmmakers, media professionals, the people that are out there loudly amplifying the humans, the stories, the voices that are across the food and beverage hospitality industry. So I'm excited to have you on. Tell everybody, host creator, restaurant TV, you're based in New York. What can people expect from restaurant TV? What can people expect from restaurant TV? Um, just a lot of uh, just the back story, the, the behind the scenes, the um, where did it all start for some chefs and restaurant owners here in, basically I started it here in New York City, but it's now I, I'm, I'm talking to people all across the country and just getting their story about how they ended up in the restaurant industry and how, how their passion started. And first of all, Jensen, I can't believe that I'm number two. I feel so lucky and thankful. So I, you know, what you're doing is just literally so needed and so amazing. And I can't thank you enough. And I, I know everyone who's going to be watching and following you is going to say the same thing because um, it, it really is important to get that personal perspective of who is behind the door of the kitchen. And you're doing it so well and letting t people just get out there and, and tell their story and, and talk about their expertise and all the things that brought them to the point they're, that they're at right now. And your show is so important. It really is. So thank so you for I doing it. You. you know, it's humans. It's always humans and communication, humans and communication. We just, I reflect on it all the time. Food was just my medium of communication. And now I have a different me medium of communication. I think that's an interesting thing. The more, the more we think about why we do what we do and who it is that we serve versus what we do and how we do it, you get chummed up in the minutia, you know, in the restaurants yeah. and you get absolutely chummed up if you're so focused on what's on the plate, not who gets it to the plate. Like those are the things that I really focus on. And so I appreciate that. Now let's take it back. The personal stories, the backstory, the origin story, episode one for you. Where did you first catch the hospitality bug? Ah, um, that would be at my mom's restaurant. And yeah, just seeing her and being just this iconic figure in the town that she had her restaurant in. Just everyone knew her and the level of respect that she just garnered just walking through a dining room and just you know making sure that everyone was just so happy was more important than them actually getting the perfect dish in fact yeah. oftentimes it was a mistake that created a lifelong guest because of the way she handled it and i just you know i never wanted the responsibility of actually owning a restaurant especially when she traded up to a 400 seat banquet hall. Um, but being with her day in and day out for years and just watching how she just took, she took control and held the energy of every situation. She was literally the master of ceremonies from the moment you walked in. And I started to feel that I could do this. She was a huge fish in a small pond and I wanted to be a small fish in a big pond, but to make a big difference. And so I got older and older. And by the time I was 70, I mean, I knew I, knew I was going to move to New York the minute I think I came out of the womb. I was like, <laughs> what is this dump? I have to get to New York City. You're New York bound from the get. And where was it that uh, she had the restaurant? Uh, she was in uh, Danbury, Connecticut, which okay. is far from here, really. It's just about an hour. Um, There's a couple of things I want to touch on that you just said that I think are important. Yeah. One is, I, I know exactly, I know your mom. Like I already, just the way that you described her, there's so many people that are like that, that just, they glide. Like when yes. you watch them in the dining room, their feet never touch the ground. And I think exactly. that, is, that is a beautiful thing. And I know people right now are watching this, listening to this and saying, I know that person. Yes. You know what you need to do? You need to call that person, text that person, visit that person and say, I got you. I see you. I remember you. And it made a difference because there's so many people like that 
that uh, don't get the accolades, you know, and I think that's important. The other thing that you said that is monumental in this industry is so often it was a mistake that turned into a great relationship. We have so many more opportunities and we demonize it sometimes and I get it, Yelp, like as a business, I don't know, there's a lot to be debated there. Yet people willing to give you feedback is the most valuable thing that you can have. And a lot of times the good experience, you just never create the, the strong relationship. The great experience and the bad experience are opportunities, I think. And so the bad experience is if you turn a negative into a positive for life, for life. with you for life. I mean, think, reflect on that a little bit, the, the strength of your mother to be able to accomplish that. And did you see that play out throughout your career in yourself or at places you worked? A hundred times a week. Yeah. A hundred times a week. And um, oddly enough, as I, I, I built more and more um, on the training side for myself because I found myself a better restaurant manager, um, when I was able to do less managing and more client relations. And so I really, I, I ended up writing a book and self-publishing a thing called Hospitality Tips for Bigger Tips or Bigger Thanks, I don't remember. But holding that, that energy was so pivotal in the fact that when they walked in the door, um, often I, you know, the human nature would be, hi, how are you? And there, the human reaction would be, good, thank you, how are you? And a hundred percent of the time, and now I have all of my all of my little hosts and major D's say it too, hundred percent of the time, good, how are you? You say it like as if it's nothing, you do it all day long. When somebody says, good, how are you? You always say, better now that you're here. And a hundred percent of the time, the minute that you say that, someone feels so valued that they actually, open took their wallet put it in their pants got in a cab took a subway got in a car whatever opened that door and you are now the smartest person on the planet because you you just recognized that you valued them before they before you even knew them so now when there's a mistake i'm already starting from up here with you it's not like down here and I'm trying to shovel my way out and I'm I'm uh, in the movie airplane and pouring out in sweat because it's just going it's going down. I can't I can't get out. Uh -huh. now I'm up here and we're already like almost best friends because he thinks I'm smart because I already valued him. It's just an amazing relationship and it it takes two seconds. You're in that situation anyway. You have those words anyway. You're gonna articulate something anyway. Why make it uh, like that's what they hear? Yeah. Good. Thank you. Follow me. Do you have a reservation? <laughs> like, no. Say something that means something to them. And for servers, I would say, please, just do me this one favor. When you go over to a table, just say this one thing before you say anything else. Who cares what your name is? Who cares? You know whether they want wine or whatever, say this one thing. Hey guys, thank you so much for coming in tonight. You will literally, you don't know whether they're having a problem or how their day was or whatever. You will literally decompress total strangers. They will automatically think, wow, this guy, this guy has got something because he's already valuing me and he doesn't even know me, but he knows that it took effort to get here with my wallet that I'm going to tip with. Mm -hmm. And it just like, those are the things that my mom would do just effortlessly, just the things that came out of her mouth that made people feel valued, total strangers. And oh, so she had a lot less yeah, problems yeah. and I had a lot less to deal with and fix. And when I fixed problems, they were, as you said, life, lifelong customers because of the problem. What and you're saying right now is so important. I want to give people two things to think about in this. Canned questions get canned answers. So like, like going to the table and say, how is everything? Everything is fine. You learned nothing from that interaction. Okay. And so to your point, you like, you got to layer the next thing on. You got to be specific. You got to pull people in multiple directions. You know, they see the manager skipping every other table to table touch obligatorily, not having an authentic experience with that individual. So I think that's one thing. The, on the flip side of that, creating those little quips and sayings that become so iconically you that everybody expects them and they love them, even though they know you say it to everybody, those really matter. My uncle Rick, we call him Rico Suave, restaurant owner, <laughs> called everyone, what's up, babe? He didn't uh -huh. remember your name. He didn't know your name. 
he called you babe what's up babe just super cool guy like riding his harley smoking cigarettes you know and it's just like that i feel like that's the kind of thing we're talking about just people know but it's just so genuinely them that they just feel like they're inside the circle and i think that's yeah. an important important aspect i love this i didn't know we were going to get so into uh hospitality this is really oh, great i am all about it like i wake up and I, i'm thinking about it i'm going to bed and i'm like no nah, i can't sleep there's one more thing i have to do i have to say i have to communicate and that's where restaurant tv came out of was that that ability to get people's voices out why do you cook why did you buy this restaurant why you know get that story out there because i'm a hundred percent gonna eat where i know this guy will you know his first recipe was he he learned next to his nana when he was four years old and she was you know like he paints this picture and the, the dish and he's still making it now and you're like what is the address i need to go yeah. it's amazing i mean food tells a story but the people behind the the it, the business, like what it takes to open up a restaurant. Somebody once, once it's open, like that's monumental. One of the hardest things there is to do. You know, I think the hardest thing to do is hit a baseball. The second hardest thing to do is open a restaurant. Like I think that there's, there's so, it seems like such a romantic thing. And to your point, there is a lot of romance and history and novelty to that. Yet it is such a grind and a hustle. Yeah. And to have those, the both like the anchor and the North Star, something we talk about, I mean, the the mission statement of our show is to value and focus on why and who before what and how. Because yes. we're so chummed up in what we do and how we do it and thinking that it's the dish. It's only the dish because you cooked it with your grandmother. Yeah. And it's because of your grandmother, the way that you interpret it, the way that you express yourself. So I think that's a really important thing for that. So. Let's get into the show, right? You're, you're finding those stories. We're very much simpatico in the way that we're really trying to find, like, what is that one thread that compels a human to do what they do? So let's get into that for you. When you started the show, you wanted to find those stories, but let's get practical because there's more of us now that are out here communicating this style. Why did you actually want to start restaurant TV specifically? Why was it this medium, this style, this approach that you thought was the way that you needed to communicate, kind of connecting those human stories? Well, honestly, Jensen, it's because you and I know how impactful social media is and how much it really, it's its everything right now. It's literally like almost half of your business, you know, in terms of what's going to drive customers in. And if restaurant owners are so overwhelmed with the day-to-day, -day, the P&L, the, you know, the driving prices, the pandemic, the new rules, the, you know, the health department coming in it's a lot and then you your base uh your base employee is literally preferring to do something else for the most part so it's a strange dichotomy where this monster called social media is looming and it's getting bigger and bigger and if you're not part of it you could easily find yourself well out of it well out of customers well out of you know being even on the radar and what the what i find the hardest to do especially for myself is to self-promote but i am good at actually promoting other people mm. and i feel that restaurant owners are in the same kind of thought process they don't care about themselves they they've they've gone into this business to give to others so it's hard for them to think about themselves and think oh i should stop take out my cell phone and set up a little you know a, a backstory about me it's so self-serving and i thought you know if i start an interview platform where they can tell their story with dignity and now it's not them promoting themselves it's me promoting them and i'll send them a copy of whatever i promote or whatever we film so that they can cut up and use it what however they want and that was the genesis just creating content for the people that I was working with and the the great restaurants that I that I frequent and the people that I know in the restaurant industry I just want I don't want them to fail I want them to have options and one of the those options is having better content or more content or different content than the four restaurants on the same block that are saying here's my burger here's my burger here's another picture of my burger and guess what it's Wednesday here's another picture of my burger you know? oh. Man, you're on 
fire right now. I need, I need, uh, we're just going to turn this into a coaching session back and forth because this is <laughs> absolute it. fire. We're so on the same page. Oh, One of the you. things that I've been very fascinated in is social media. It's so easy for us to demonize it because one, we are Luddites. We don't necessarily aren't early adopters of technology as a historical industry standard, right? So that's one thing for us, for sure. The other is we are so motivated by butts and seats, by yes. being able to control and sometimes over manipulate the experience that somebody has because we think that's the opportunity that we're creating for ourselves to change their trajectory and thereby create a repeat customer, right? That's the name of the game in that front. What I'm super fascinated by is like how then we're being so transactional in the nature to your point. It's like, here's my thing, buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this. We're not telling stories. Mm -hmm. We're not spending the time to say thank you for coming before they ever even come, right? And I think that's yeah. huge. One of the things I want your opinion on is I've been trying to think about the things that we do well in restaurants and trying to shift those into some of the new technologies. I've been talking about this being a table touch opportunity. Yeah, You're big into table touches. We know that we want to touch every guest. We want to interact with them. We want to find out that they love the Riesling and talk about another bottle that they should have the next time that they come so that you're creating, again, that repeat. You only have 36 tables. That's 36 table touches times two in an in a evening, let's say. Yeah. This has the potential for you to table touch 2,472,000 tables. Huge opportunity. Wow, you're good at that. About our four walls, too linear. We're boxing ourselves in. Go there. I don't know if there was a question there, but go there because I feel like you're gonna have some great insights. Well, well, I'm not even sure what the question was. I'm like, I don't so either. <laughs> Do you think? Let's talk more just about social media. I think again. I think table touches. I think about thinking about the mentality of the way that we treat hospitality. If there's a way to use social media for that, where else are, is your head going when you're thinking of social media and that communication medium for a way for restaurants to? take advantage of it, to utilize it, to have it become a part of, you know, standard steps of service. Okay. Well, for, huh, it's interesting that you're asking me this because it's, it's one of my big um, pet peeves that, that no one is willing to retrain and recalibrate from the front of the house all the way to the back based on social media. Mm -hmm. And right now is when you should be recalibrating your hosts to not just be taking, um, I'm sorry, your reservationists, but you're not taking just reservations and saying, are you celebrating an event or uh, an occasion with us? But once you, oh yes, I am having a, a birthday, you know, or no, it's just a Tuesday. Okay, well, it's going to be happy Tuesday. That's, you know, like make a celebration out of out of everything. And then and then once you get that information, oh my gosh, you're having a, a, a celebration, you're having a birthday. It's what's what's the name? Oh, Jensen. Beautiful. Well, you know, I have um, one of the servers that night actually does when they bring a, the dessert out with the candle, he'll also videotape it for you. So that and we can actually take, you know, if you want, we can actually get you can drop your phone at some point when you go to the bathroom you can set, look, set up your phone and almost live and when we're ready to bring out the dessert we can do it broadcast live or we can do it just a video and then send it as a special gift that you've organized for that birthday boy and but the long and the short is you know you're you're creating much more value than just steak on a plate and a, a dessert and a candle but on top of it now you've you're, in order to send the video, what do you need? You need their telephone number and the ability to text it to them. So now you're building your your social your your ability to just send out a text list, right? Real quick. Oh, by the way, I know you had a, an event here last month. We're doing blah blah blah, whatever. But now you're collecting phone numbers from people that that are saying, text me, text me that that video. You just created something so much more valuable than, a, than just a dead on picture and hoping that you're going to get it on social media, right? You've got a video and you're telling them that they can use it as a special gift from them. But on top of it, when, when servers are asked, oh, can you take our picture? And you get asked a million times a night, my servers ended up saying, yeah, well, we've got a specialist. And they would be like, hey, Leanne, <laughs> because they don't have the time to stop right. and be a photographer, you know? And I, I totally get that. I don't want 
I never want anyone's money to ever be affected, you know, by one of the ideas that I'm having. But I've tried all of these out multiple times. And every single time the servers are like, oh my God, I'm making so much more money because people feel like they're getting more value. When you when somebody says, Can I can you take a picture of us? You don't say, Oh, sure, no problem. That's that's another canned, I mean, in Jensen's book, that's canned. Yep. You know, that's like, you're not special. I do this all night long, especially if it's like, sure, no problem. Anyway, I know we're, we're short on time, but absolutely. But I have to warn you, it's conditional. And they're like, what, what? All right, the first one is your way. The second one is my way. And of course they're gonna be intrigued, right? So, but then you have your special way. Mine is always the rock star cover, the angry rock star cover album, especially if there are grandparents involved. So now you've got like, you've got like a table of five or six, Perfect. and the older the better. And because when they're pointing at the at the camera like that, this is the picture that they love. They love. You know, and they want more of that. They want to be styled, but they don't. It's too embarrassing to say, "Hey guys, let's all point at the camera," because it's like, "No, you're a moron." Mm -hmm. <laughs> but this way, you get to control. You're the master of ceremonies. And then once that picture is taken, you're like, "Hey guys, don't don't be shy. Feel free to post this on on our Facebook page. I know my boss would love it, and he's gonna think I'm doing a really good job." And I am, right? And then you just hand the, ca the camera back because now they feel like they're doing you a, a favor by possibly getting you a promotion, getting you recognition. It's just this full circle of this huge free tool called social media that can be either this amazing asset in your business or this monster that takes you down. And you have to recalibrate right now. Leanne, you got me buzzing right now. This oh is God. absolutely the types of conversation we need. Again, I love that you're connecting it to things we already do well in restaurants. Like it's already something that we do. It's not this divergent thing. It's taking the line of thought and training and what's been ingrained in us and what is in our DNA and extending that to the next likely scenario and to its fullest potential, I think is huge. I When you were talking about the reservation, I was like, oh, what if you even took it further yeah. and said, what if somebody creates a 10 top? Whoever's making the reservation for the 10 top is the master of ceremony for their group. Imagine saying, hey, and if you're interested, we'd love to um, to include you in stories leading up to your event. Do you have a social media handle you'd like us to use? And you conclude them in stories of the different things the chef is working on so that before they even walk in the door, they already know what they're going to order because they've been sharing with their 10 friends, their nine friends, what's happening at the restaurant, what they're excited about. They don't even need a menu. They've That's already decided funny. what they want because one of the things that has come up as a negative with social media is... is um, Table turns are slowing down because people are spending more time on their phone. It's slowing down the rate of consumption of food. And people are saying, well, uh, they're not ready to order yet because they haven't even looked at the menu because they're sitting there checking in or doing whatever on social media. I'm fascinated right. in that because if they're checking in on social media, that's a positive. I love that yeah. you're writing this down. <laughs> that it's a positive. But what if they already? what if they don't even need a menu? What if they walk in the door and say, we're getting this and this and this and this and this and a 10 top orders within seven minutes, that changes everything. Like I get very practical on those things. I think there's a yeah. huge opportunity. I love that you started with the reservation and went all the way through the full experience. Amazing. Well, thank you. And while you're to your point, uh, one of the things that I had in my book is that when you're after you've greeted your your guests with thank you for coming in and, you know, got them comfortable with whatever the first, uh, you know, whether it's wine or water, you know, asking, hey, d just asking, did everyone check in? Because I know that's important, like throwing it away. But now every single person at that table is going, oh, ding, ding. And then they're getting on their phone and you just multiplied your exposure through that one waiter who wants to be doing an, a, a different job in the first place, right? You've just, you, I mean, training is everything, but, but his ability to control and start, you know, being the master of ceremonies is ending, it's gonna end up with a higher tip for him, nicer clientele for him because he's on their side from, from the get-go. It's not standard, how can I help you? And you're right, like having this, st the stories follow them and the menu already prepared. But, but Jensen, what if we took it one, one step further and if that host or the reservationist said, okay, well, since you are a table of 10, we can offer this and, you know, because you're, you're dying, oh, I'm sorry, I can't order, I can't offer it during peak times. But if you were coming in earlier or later than our dinner rush, like maybe 
even a half an hour, I can make sure that the, that the chef customizes um, a, a little special tasting menu and then comes out and actually meets your guest of honor. You know, like these drop these seeds, like you were saying earlier, communication is everything. And using these words of communication, they may not take that bait for this reservation because everyone's agreed on seven o'clock. But in the future, this girl knows a a video, b possibly live, c the the, the stories, personalized menus. They sit down and things just start coming out. Oh my God, that's VIP. And then the chef comes out with the, you know, it's, it, that's an experience. And now, you know, that's going to be something that they talk about when the server comes over and says, check, you know, did everyone check in those, like everything is just going to be like magnified instead of hoping for one picture or one check-in off of one stake, you've now created a social media storm off of that one reservation because that reservationist was trained. Yeah, we talk about word of mouth and grassroots marketing restaurants, word of mouth, just make great food, great service, and people will come back. That is just not the case anymore. And maybe it never quite was. You know, I think we over romanticize that just a little bit. I think now you have the opportunity. This yeah. is word of mouth. So yeah. think about it in the same way and it can be amplified. We we know the numbers. We know a person who has a great experience will tell three people. A person who has a bad experience will tell 10 people. Well, that now is to the power of 10 and you can utilize that as a strength or a weakness. So I love this. I thought we were going to talk about hosting a, a show. This was really great. We got into the weeds with some hospitality stuff, which I appreciate. Let's take real quick. I want to touch on some humans because you shouted out a lot of people and I want to mention a few of them. I'm literally just going to have Sophie start throwing people on the screen and we're just going to rip off who they are quickly just so they get a little bit of acknowledgement. Okay. Okay. Jennifer and Jeremy Marshall um, had Aqua Grill for 22 years. Best seafood on the planet. And, you know, definitely within, you know, have you heard of the restaurant Le Bernardin? Oh, oh my God. That was of course. Ever. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I'm not actually talking to chefs, so I, I'm sorry. So all of the staff ate, ate at our place because they could afford it. And they're like, it's the same food. <laughs> it Love was it. magic in your mouth. It really was. Um, Jay, he's the magician in the kitchen at Aqua Grill. And uh, Sai, he's the GM at Marseille. Um, Tour de France owns a uh, five napkin burger. Um, it doesn't matter what you get there. It, it, you know, your your head is gonna explode. Everything is always so fresh, but it's like a down to earth place. So you're like always blown away by how great things are. Uh, Rich Wolf, one of the best people I've ever met. Um, he and Kim, really that's how i cut my teeth in the restaurant industry just learning how to do things the right way from inventory to managing people answering phones greeting um they were almost as good as my mom <laughs> <laughs> oh i love it and howie yeah that was he he owned uh docs on broadway where um i first uh the, he actually was the first one to give me an opportunity to train as a general manager and i was a baby then and it was that was a lot for 200 years ago, um, I was young then, and it was like I was like the only female GM, and uh, it was I, it was a lot. I was very proud. All right, and then Monty Silva, who is actually Monty who, Silva, yeah, yes, that's who connected us, and uh, that's how I came on to your show. I saw his episode, uh, just soft spoken, but just like a killer. Like he just knows the industry so well. So let, let's touch on that. Being able to speak with somebody like Monty Silva when you had him on the show, like. What are those threads that you're pulling at? What does somebody like Monty kind of mean to restaurant TV? To me, he, I, I was so fortunate to actually have him connect with me, but to, to actually talk to him and the content that he brings, I feel bad for everybody else. I really do. <laughs> like, you, you just can't get to that level. And I feel so strongly that anybody who just – reaches out and talks to him and says, hey, can you help me out? He, he, he had a very, very valid point. Once you're in the restaurant industry and you've owned, you, you, you put it together, you own, you bought it, you're the top of the chain. Like when, you, when you're scared, when you're, when you're underwater, like who are you gonna turn to? Like it's, it's, there's nowhere else. And he is this guy that will literally save your life and save your sanity just talking to him off camera, like I was blown away by how much insight he has and how it can literally change somebody's 
per, uh, traje trajectory right now. Even if it's just, even if you're going under and you're overwhelmed, he's he's already got the answer and he's just at the end of the phone. I love it. Leanne, I really appreciate it. What an amazing conversation. I love that we got to go down some great rabbit holes. I think people watching, listening, will get some practical advice as well as some just like good feels and kind of thinking back to mom to kind of practically the way that we think about hospitality and the way that we're selling stories, social media. I mean, amazing, amazing conversation. So Leanne Holmesy, host creator, Restaurant TV, you're in New York. I really appreciate you being on. I appreciate you and I appreciate the fact that I'm going to see you on Restaurant TV on September 9th, Wednesday. Yes. Look you out are. for that, people. Yeah. We, uh, I, I think I know what we're going to be talking about. We can go <laughs> even further down some rabbit holes and I think it's going to be a to be continued. We're going to have to connect. Uh, I might have to have Corey uh, cut together a video that's an extension of our two shows because the level of like practicality and hospitality, I think, is an important thing for us to think about. So you have a great day. I'm going to wrap up with Thank the audience. You. I appreciate you so much for being on. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jensen. Thank you for everything. All right. Leanne Holmesy, amazing. I love that we got to really dig into some of the topics that I'm so passionate about. You hear me talk about them in and out, weaving them in and out of different episodes. I'm always looking for the opportunity to like hammer home one of those uh, points of, of the pillars of the different things that I'm really focused on within hospitality, food and beverage and restaurants so that we can kind of talk ethos, big picture, why we can talk who, and then we can get into the, into the granular a little bit and get into the what and how and the, and the tactics that restaurants really need to deploy. So yeah, recording chefs at home. We didn't even really like dig into kind of the way that uh, her show is a really recording chefs and restaurant people kind of in their natural habitats, which Maybe it's not at home. Maybe that is the restaurant. Anyway, I digress. This uh, show, Best Served Loud, this channel, I'm excited about it because you can tell like Leanne just is just such an amplifier of amazing humans and stories in hospitality and to have somebody out there promoting what's happening within the restaurant scene and the humans they're in. I think it really matters. So I'm excited about this. Storytellers, filmmakers, media professionals, everybody who's out there and amplifying and being loud about those stories of our unsung hospitality heroes. It matters. That's it for today. I appreciate you as always. Thank you for coming in tonight. I appreciate you. I love that. Cheers.